Hello and welcome back to the JNCIS Security Video Training Series. In this section we are going to be discussing Juno's clustering theory. So let's get started. Juno's OS high availability features provide stateful TCP and UDP session failover, including those with IPsec, NAT, or authentication options. Configuration and runtime states are synchronized between cluster members. Control plane redundancy is currently available in an active-passive mode, with the data plane able to do active-active. Clustering provides redundancy by grouping two similar devices into a cluster, with one acting as the primary and the other acting as the secondary or backup. A control link is established between the routing engines of both boxes, and a data link is established between the data planes. These links ensure stateful failover in the case of hardware or software failure. Platforms must be of the same model, and all of the cards must be of the same type and placement. Devices with a chassis cluster sync configuration, kernel, and PFE session states across the cluster. A cluster configuration includes a cluster ID, node ID, redundancy groups, and chassis cluster interfaces such as FPX0 or FPX1 control plane interfaces. FAB, the data plane interface, SWFAB, the switching data plane interface, and wreath a redundancy interface. Up to 15 chassis clusters can share the same local environment, and each cluster is identified by a unique cluster ID. Cluster ID 0 is reserved for standalone systems and cluster configurations will be ignored on a system with a cluster ID of 0. A nodes ID identifies a specific cluster member and is also used to calculate interface IDs on the second cluster member. The FPC slot in a cluster is calculated as the cluster interface FPC number equals node ID times max FPC slots, plus the regular FPC slot number. Using this formula, a five slot system with node ID 1 would have its first slot, normally 0, numbered 5. A redundancy group is an abstract collection of objects from both nodes of a cluster. It is primary on one node and secondary on the other, and a node with an active RG has its objects active. Up to 256 RGs can be configured. They are independent entities, and one failing over does not affect another. The initial redundancy group, called RG0, is created when the cluster is created, and it manages failover of the routing engines on each system. Only one routing engine can be active on a cluster at any time, and the member with the active RG0 has the active routing engine. Other redundancy groups must be configured by the user to manage interface redundancy. Each redundancy group can have up to 15 redundant Ethernet interfaces. A chassis cluster consists of the following components. Cluster identification, including cluster ID, ID, and node ID. Redundancy groups, or RGs. And chassis cluster interfaces, such as FPX1. The control plane interface, XP0. The out-of-band management interface, FAB. The data plane interface, SWFAB. The switching plane interface, and the wreath interface, or the redundancy interface. An RG can be in one of three states, blank, primary, or secondary, and they can transition from any one to any other state as needed. Usually they will be in primary or secondary, reverting to blank only when the RG is deleted or the platform is rebooted. Primacy Rules the node with the higher priority is primary. By default, both nodes have the same priority for RG0, but this can be changed. RGX priorities must be specified. 
If both cluster nodes are initialized simultaneously, the RG0 priority is default. Node 0 takes precedence. If one node is up before the other, it takes precedence and stays primary unless the other node has a preempt option set. Preempt is not supported on RG0. There are several ways for an RG to transition. The most common way is if an interface associated with an RG goes down. Each interface associated with an RG has a weight. If the weight of all interfaces is over the tolerance, which is the default, and the default is 255, a failover is triggered. The tolerance is adjusted downwards by the weight of an interface until the threshold reaches zero. When a failover occurs, all objects within that RG fail over to the other node. Interfaces are handled by a new type of pseudo-interface, known as wreath. It is made up of two child interfaces, one from each cluster member, and the child inherits the settings of their parent. Each child will be given an active or passive mode, but never both, and their failover properties come from the redundancy group they are associated with. The wreath interface has a virtual MAC or VMAC built into the cluster and interface ID. The first 24 bits are the Juniper Network's OUI, followed by 8 reserve bits. The last 16 bits can be affected by users. Bits 33 and 36 are cluster ID, and the last 8 bits are the wreath interface number. This MAC calculation scheme is what ensures that multiple clusters can live on the same network without interfering with each other. Wreath interfaces can also take a part in lag. Wreath interfaces can also take part in a lag. A redundant lag interface consists of two or more Ethernet interfaces and provides two or more layers of redundancy. All child interfaces must be the same speed and be in full duplex mode and copper and fiber can be mixed in the same lag. A maximum of 128 lag interfaces are available, with up to 16 members, 8 per node, per wreath lag. When both devices in a lag are back-to-back, -back, the lag only needs to be configured on the devices. If a switch is between the cluster members, the lag must be configured to be able to pass the traffic through the switch. Out-of-band network interfaces are available on Junos OS gateways. On branch class devices, one of the interfaces is designated as an FXP0 interface, while the high-end platforms contain an interface dedicated to this purpose. Unique IP addresses should be applied to each FXP0 interface, as this allows independent node management. Another dedicated interface is known as FXP1. It is the control link for the chassis cluster and again is created from a revenue port on the branch device. But data center class systems have dedicated ports on their SPCs for this purpose. Their control ports must still be specified though. It is used to sync configuration as well as send heartbeats. If heartbeats are missed, up to a configured maximum, nothing happens. Once the threshold is reached, and if the FAB interface still receives probes, the primary node for RG0 takes over duties for all other RGs, and the secondary node is disabled. To recover, the secondary must either be rebooted or the control link recovery option must be set. Two interfaces one for each node, must also be designated as FAB interfaces. This is the data plane fabric link. FAB0 is the link for node 0, and FAB1 is for node 1. The interfaces must be in the same interface type and be on the same network. They enable session sync and the transit link for data planes in active-active mode. Monitoring is done via fabric probes. Just like a control link failure, an FAB interface failure results in the secondary node being disabled, and a reboot of the primary is required to restore normal operation. 
Normal interface features, including units, are not supported on FAB or FXP links. Fragmentation is not supported, but jumbo frames up to 8980 bytes are. SWFAB interfaces are like FAB interfaces, but are used as switching interfaces in an HA environment. Switch fabric probes are used to monitor the interfaces, and if too many are lost, the nodes move to separate switching domains. This does not break the cluster as long as FXP1 and fab links are working. Fabric links transmit real-time objects, state information, fabric probes, and transit data. If the only fabric link fails, the backup node loses all state information and is disabled. The only way to recover from this is to reboot that node. Dual fabric links Dual fabric links allow sessions to be maintained if one fails. Dual switch fabric links are also possible. The frames are load balanced across the two links when they are both up. Dual links must be of the same type on both nodes. The SFP interfaces on branched units cannot be used. RTOs and probes are sent over one link, while data traffic crosses the other. This is beneficial in active-active scenarios so that the links are not oversubscribed. RTOs and probes use the lowest numbered interface, while data crosses the other. Recovery is a bit easier. If one fabric link goes down, it will be considered to be the backup if hellos are received for 30 seconds. Dual fabric links are considered to be aggregate Ethernet connections and reduce the number of interfaces by one when implemented. High-end SRXs also support dual control plane links. Unlike fabric links, only one link will be available at any given time. The 5000 series requires a second SCB and routing engine. Once this is done, the control ports on any installed SPC can be used. It is possible, but not recommended to use both ports on an SPC. They really should be on different cards to protect from a card failure. The lowest numbered SPC is also used for session processing, so higher numbered cards should be used. The 3000 series requires an SRX clustering mode to support dual control links. It takes the place of a routing engine, but does not act as a routing engine. The SRX 1400 supports dual control links with the addition of an SYSIO card, which adds ports 10 and 11. They are dedicated control links and no other configuration is needed. Data plane synchronization is handled with the exchange of real-time objects, or RTOs, across the data fabric link. Data exchanged includes session table entries, IPsec essays, and other information. This way, session information is maintained to allow traffic to flow after a failover occurs. Chassis cluster members needed to be connected directly to each other in the past. Now they can be in separate locations connected by a Layer 2 network with no more than 100 millisecond latency. Both the control and data links need 1 gigabit channels, but only in active-active mode. Active-passive mode requires significantly less overhead. FXP and FAB links should also be dedicated, should also be on dedicated networks not shared with anything else, due to the sensitive nature of the data being transmitted. This feature is not available for SWFAB interfaces. Branch chassis clusters can also act as switches, except for the 100 series or the 210s. Only Ethernet switches can be configured this way. Not even wreath interfaces support it. Lags are supported, but both must live on the same host. The SWFAB interface must be built before the cluster is created. Ethernet ports support various Layer 2 features such as Spanning Tree Protocol, .1x, LAGS, Internet Group Management Protocol, or IGMP, GARP VLAN Registration Protocol, or GVRP, 
Link Layer Discovery Protocol, or LLDP, and IGMP snooping. Users can configure a Layer 2 VLAN domain with member ports from both the nodes and the Layer 2 switching protocols on both of the devices. These Layer 2 VLAN domains can take advantage of integrated routing and bridging and VLAN interfaces to facilitate Layer 3 routing. Probe status can be viewed using the Show Chassis Cluster Ethernet Switching command. Additional monitoring can be obtained using IP address monitoring. This will ping the IP address of your choice and are sent from the IP in the secondary IP address statement. It must be on the same subnet as the wreath it is associated with. Monitoring multiple routes may require multiple wreath interfaces, and each wreath needs to have the same IP. The Show Chassis Cluster IP Monitoring Status command shows the current state of the monitored IP address. If one is down, reviewing the output of the command can help. The Reason field has several different values. No route to host, no auxiliary IP found, wreath child not up, redundancy group state unknown, no wreath child MAC address, secondary link not monitored, and unknown. IPsec tunnels terminating on a cluster usually use the wreath interface as its anchor. This helps ensure that the session stays up during a failover. Branch devices can also use the loopback interface for tunnel termination, though this is not supported on the high-end SRXs. IP version 6 is also supported in active-active clustering as well as active-passive. Interface monitoring is available as a dual-stack wreath and address book entries. IPsec over IP version 6 is unsupported. High-end SPC placement is important. SPCs in different slots or different numbers of SPCs can cause communication between chassis to be problematic, as each SPC must communicate to its peer. Each SPC that is handling a session or service sends RTOs to its peer across the fabric link. Graceful restart is a technique used to help ensure uninterrupted packet forwarding by temporarily suppressing protocol updates from BGP, OSPF, ISIS, RIP, and, and so on. This enables the local routing process to go through state transitions unseen by the external network. Okay, so let's review. Which interfaces do the control and data planes use? Well, the control plane of the chassis cluster uses SPC ports on high-end systems and revenue ports on branch platforms and is named FXP1. The data plane connects using physical ports named FAB0 and FAB1. What is the purpose of the FAB interface? Well, the FAB interface serves as the data plane link between nodes in a chassis cluster and transmits RTOs to replicate session states between the two nodes. What is RG, and what is the significance of RG0 and RGX? An RG is an abstract entity that manages the redundancy of a group of objects. The software creates RG0 when a chassis cluster forms to manage primacy of routing engines. The software uses RGX to manage primacy of wreath interfaces. What is the default threshold for the interface and IP address monitoring? Well, the default threshold for interface monitoring is, of course, 255. All right, that's it for this section. Now it's time to take a short quiz and test your knowledge. After the quiz, move on to the next section. Thanks for watching.